What's going on guys, Flickify here with episode 4 of season 2 for this Aston Villa career mode. Today's episode is going to be a big one because we have our first really major test in the Champions Cup against Juventus. Then of course we have a match against Newcastle in the league and then a match against Bournemouth in the Capital One Cup. But also, in addition to that, I want to start off this episode with a squad report because I don't think I've shown a proper one since the start of the second season. So of course we're gonna sort by position and check out some of these players. Just pause the video if you want a closer look at a single player in particular. Already you can see some growth has been made by Akori as well as Herman. Fabian Delph has grown a little bit. And then a couple of players including Scott Sinclair, I'm not sure how he's managed to grow. Um, but Roberto Firmino is starting to grow in his attributes. Christian Benteke growing. Uh, Pulsing up plus two already this season. Really nice to see him getting a bit of a growth spurt. And that's going to bring it into the squad report, but we also have a monthly scouting update. And if you guys are enjoying this career mode so far, you can do me a favor. Leave a like down below. You guys have been leaving so much support. But we have a scouting report from the U.S. Of course, we are looking for a winger, and I don't think I'm going to sign this guy, so I'm going to reject him straight away. We'll watch this guy for another month because his overall is not too bad. And then I'm really excited what Polson has because he's our five-star, five-star scout. 64 to 88. A 66 to 88, a 68 to 92, a lot of players really high up there in the potential, no 94 players, so we're just going to keep an eye on all these guys for another month, and if they end up having the upper end of their potential, I think we'll sign them up. For our first match in the group stage of the Champions Cup, we have made a few changes due to fitness issues. We've decided to give Sinclair the start of the left mid position in replace for Timo Werner, and then we've given Danny Ings the start in replace for Yusuf Paulson. We'll take a look at the Juventus lineup, and it looks like they've signed Hugo Lloris, and then no other notable signings that I can see. And still, it's a really strong side, so we have our work cut out for us. It's Isla on the ball. He's going to send in the cross. That's a dangerous cross. It's going to fall to Tevez. we got to clear it. And we do. That's how we do it. We're on the counter. Make that run, Danny Ings. He is through right now. Does he have the pace to get by the defense? He's going to try to get it on the near post, and he gets it by Hugo Lloris. I don't know how he didn't save it. He got a piece of it, but we get the 1-0 lead against, really, the, the turn of play. Juventus have been dominating us in this game, but a huge fatal error by Hugo Lloris leads to a goal. Oh, that's a good through ball played. It's to Carlos Tevez. Can we make a save? Guzan able to get to it. And what is that for a clearance, though? Guzan making save after save and he's gonna make another and they miss an open net oh he was off sides but still he missed an open net Murata what are you doing Danny Ings have a touch drag it back have a go oh he misses a great opportunity we could have been up 2-0 away from home Danny Ings just couldn't make it on target I think it's time for some substitutions Oh, it's over to Llorente. This is dangerous. They're going to play it inside. And it trickles wide. What a chance for Arturo Vidal to tie things up. But we're just going to hang on. Cross sent in. It's Llorente. Guzan able to make the save. But it's a dangerous corner kick. They've got a lot of tall players in. And this is crucial for them. And crucial for us to clear it. Let's see if we can do that. Yes, we can. Can we go on the counter? That was a huge win for us. The fact that we've been able to pick up the full three points against Juventus is going to be crucial for us to advance to the next round. This next match against Newcastle is only two days after our previous match in the Champions Cup, so we had to make a few substitutions due to tired players. Jonas Gutierrez is going to be able to find the open man, but he is off sides, and we luck out right there. Remy Cabela on the ball. And he's going to go for the free kick. That one's on target. Guzan able to pull off a pretty nice save, though. Oh, great dribbling. Just the cross now. That's a perfect cross. The use of Poulsen. He's going to hit the top of the crossbar, though. Some great build up play by Christian Benteke to create that. Use of Poulsen just unable to get it on target, though. It's Tonev on the ball. He's going to cut inside. Lays it off to Christian Benteke. Can he finish it? Yes, he can. And he's going to pick up the 1-0 lead for us after Yusuf Poulsen was unable to finish the opportunity that he created. He gets us the lead. Oh, Christian Benteke is just so tenacious on the ball. See if he can get on that near post. Oh, this time Darlo's able to make the save. 
We had just enough to pick up the 1-0 victory there. A couple of missed opportunities, but we still get the three points. All right, the final match of the episode will be in the Capital One Cup against Bournemouth. We have a very rotated team, and we are giving Callum Howard his first start at that right mid position. Well, what a start for Bournemouth. One minute into the game. Wasn't even talking over that because I didn't expect much of that shot. But hey, they get it by Jack Button and they deserve that goal. Danny Ings is going to be able to get by this defender. Just has to get it by the keeper. And that's a good save by Camp. But we do pick up a corner. Berta Firmino. That's a good move. That's a great move. And what a finish. Just world-class dribbling by Roberto Firmino to set that up. He's the only type of player, apart from Christian Benteke, that I think could have created a chance like that. We're going to play this one outside to Jack Relish. He's got some help in the center. Let's see if we can get to that. And it's Roberto Firmino rising up and picking up his second goal in the game. And that'll give us the lead. I think we can go on to score a few more now that we've got some of our starters in on the pitch. It's Wilson on the ball. He's going to send the cross. That's a good save by Butland. But the rebound is going to be picked up by Bournemouth, and they tie it up in the 82nd minute. Hopefully this doesn't go into extra time, and we'll see if we can get a late winner. Oh my gosh, the chance for the counterattack is here. It's Roberto Firmino. I am going to sweat this if I can. And there it is, Christian Benteke getting the late winner. Oh man, guys, I had to sweat it. I didn't want to have to play a replay or go into extra time, whatever it is. Christian Benteke gets the late winner. Could have been Roberto Firmino's hat trick, but I will take the sweat any day of the week. That match was a little bit too close for comfort, but we still picked up the win. And I hope you guys did enjoy this episode today. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, this has been Flickify. I'll be talking to you all again soon. At his peak, Laporte reaches a 91 overall rating and a one of the world's best status and an estimated value of 46.5 million. Some insane growth right there, over 38 million. He does pick up four specialties over the